Yo! <laughs> Yo, what's good, bro? <laughs> what's good? We back again. <laughs> what you got right there? This sure. is uh, a smart robot lawnmower. Um, and they're saying this time it's actually autonomous. So <laughs> it should be able to do the work by itself. You it should. It's really autonomous. Because that was the same thing you told me last year. I mean. And I was here every time coming to control the thing all the time so there's only one way to find out right okay you gotta set it up so the last robot vacuum or sorry robot lawnmower that we had was supposed to be autonomous or at least we thought it was supposed to be autonomous right yep we wanted it to be autonomous but it was um nothing like this it was much larger um it required a controller like an xbox controller of some sort to kind of control it so you have to actually still do the work and it costs more money than this yeah. so the hope is that, I mean, it did have a bit more features than this. Like, you know, this thing is, looks like it's a bit more simplified. Like it can do um, the same thing, but not all the same features that that could do. Yeah. But the most important thing, at least I think for something like this, is the fact that this thing can consistently, consistently maintain your yard for you, man. Like that's what I would see, you know, the value in something like this being, because I, I've got robot vacuums. You've got robot vacuums, right? Yeah. Now, what is the biggest value to you when it comes to using something like that? I mean, first of all, if it's autonomous, I want to make sure that I'm not, I don't need to come here to babysit the thing, right? Yeah. It should be able to go out there, I come out here, all I need to do is just come in and not have to come in here all the time, right? So that's the biggest thing. But and I think another thing I noticed, you came in here with one hand with this thing. <laughs> that is... Bro, that blew my mind. That's crazy. When I took it out the box, and I'll get over what, what comes in the box in a second here, but there's a few more things I got to talk about when it comes to the features of this thing. The portability, the size, like look at this thing. It's almost the size of an actual robot vacuum. So that's why I walked in with it with one arm. Even our mom, she can... She, she can handle it herself. So. We're back at, at our mom's yard again. Um, I, I think this is the second time now, second year, uh, since we, we've been here talking about something like a second summer in a row. So this time we've got something that's promised to actually have full self-driving. So this is the Eufy E18 Smart Lawn Mower. Now we're gonna be testing out all sorts of different features that this thing comes with. And um, one of the biggest thing, or one of the biggest features being uh, how quickly it should be to set up. So we're gonna test out how quickly we can get this thing uh, going, how quickly we can set up on the app and then get it auto mapped um, to my mom's yard here and then we're gonna put it to work. But is it really, really self-driving? Is it really autonomous? Well, let's find out. Let's talk about what comes in the box. First, you've got the smart lawnmower itself, then you've got a garage as well as a base station. So those two things combine together to make the home a little uh, storage station or charging station for this little guy right here. Besides that, you've got your power adapter, you've got um, some tools to set up the garage, and then you've got uh, some extra supplies. So some grease, uh, cloth, and extra blades. Nothing else, setting it up is super quick. Uh, matter of fact, that's one of the things they're promising uh, is a huge or major feature of this guy. The whole thing should be able to be uh, up and ready for action in under five minutes. Well, besides um, the charging time, because this thing is gonna need some time to charge at least. But we're gonna see what they mean or if that's actually true, how quickly this thing can, uh, uh, will take to set up. Because I just took it out the box and this is it. This is, this is what you get. And by the way, there's also an E15 model, which is pretty much the same thing. It costs less than this one but uh, also cuts just a slight bit less um, amount of acres. So 0 0.2 uh, acres versus 0 0.3 acres. If you want something that can cut more, then you want this guy right here. So besides the fact that it's super compact, we've got a bunch of um, advanced tech on this thing. So first off, I'm gonna talk about the most important one or they're, they're what they're trying to uh, really highlight with this product. This is called um, an AI camera, so it uses uh, or it allows the robot to use uh, something called visual full self-driving to map out your yard. So you, it maps out your yard, it, it uses it to identify obstacles. We've got a control panel right here, so you've got some buttons on here. Um, a power button, play, pause, home, and kind of check mark button right here. You've also got your power indicator or battery indicator right here, which we'll see how that works soon. Then there's a stop or an emergency stop button right here, as well as a rain sensor so when it's raining this thing will let you know if it's time for it to go back um, into its uh, garage so we've also got the driving wheels right here so we've got two of these um, on the rear side of the 
robots, so they're larger than the single one in the, uh, in the front side. We've also got a bumper um, all around the front side and the sides of the uh, mower right here. This is here to help it whenever it hits or makes contact with any object or people or whatever it makes contact with. We've got one last thing here, which is the charging port. So this is how it will uh, connect with the base station or the charging station. So if you look under uh, the UVE18, you'll notice that we've got uh, a front wheel here. So this is called the Omni wheel and it's got a lift sensor. They've also got something called um, an air tag compartment here where you can store or put an air tag uh, to notify you if you are you're an Apple user, that is. But if not, well, you can find some other kind of tracker and try to see if you can fit it in there. I don't know if it's gonna fit though, but with this one, uh, you've got screws here that you've, you're gonna have to take off in order to access this compartment. So if somebody wants to steal it, they probably wouldn't even know that you've got one in here. You've also got a safety key and you've got the main power switch. This main power switch is how you actually turn on um, the robot initially. Besides that, we've got our blades, our blade disc, and the blade disc uh, shield. We had a bit of challenge finding somewhere to put this thing because you need an outlet or a power receptacle in order uh, to charge it or to keep this thing, uh, this charging station connected. So we decided to place it here temporarily. We're gonna figure out a better spot for it, but uh, you wanna make sure that you find somewhere nice and safe and out of sight. To set it up, all we have to do is drive these uh, six pegs into six holes um, in the base station right here. And once we have that done, we install this top cover and then we connect the power cable. One of my favorite things about this versus um, what I've dealt with in the past with these kinds of devices is there's no RTK kit. Way less wiring to deal with, which is honestly, honestly a big relief. It's quick to set it up. I'm just putting these pegs right now, driving them into the earth. And then once we have this done, it's gonna charge up and it should be good to go. All right, that feels pretty sturdy. So we're bringing in the top piece. Uh, we've got some thumb screws here we're gonna use to get this guy uh, secured on there. Four of them, so very quick to get them in there. I missed two of these pegs the first time, so I'm gonna put them in, I missed them uh, on the back side here, so there's eight instead of six. This is one of the fastest and quickest things that I've ever actually put together. And I can't wait to see how it all uh, works, like the actual robot itself, but one last step here is to hook this thing up to power. So you have a power block here and you got a pretty thin cable that extends, it's, it's a lot, like there's a lot of slack. We're not gonna use all of these because my receptacle is just up on the deck on that side there. I'm not saying this is going to replace mowing your lawn completely or maintenance, but it will help out. It's going to reduce how much or how, how often we have to do that. I just plugged it in. Uh, it should be powered up right now. I'm gonna try to get the robot uh, to dock in there and start charging and then we'll carry on from there. Setting up the app was quick and easy. I simply added the E18 to my existing UV app setup. The process involves powering on the device and resetting it so it can be discovered and added to your home Wi-Fi network. After that, you just need to prepare the lawn for the robot's first map and run. Since it was getting dark outside, I received a message from the app suggesting I wait for better lighting conditions to try the auto mapping feature. So, well, I decided to continue the next day. The app interface is intuitive, similar to a robot vacuums app, but designed for lawns instead of floors. The main screen displays the lawnmower's operation status with immediate start and stop controls. The details section offers comprehensive information and an extensive settings menu where you can manage maps, view mowing history, and set up mowing schedules. The robot has anti-theft features like alerts, app notifications, and a find my device function just like an iPhone. For extended range operation, the E18 comes equipped with 4G and GPS tracking capabilities, especially when Wi-Fi isn't available. The app also helps you monitor maintenance needs by showing the condition of the blades in the base station, indicating when replacements are necessary. So we left this thing overnight here um, to charge since last night it was too dark for us to actually auto map and do anything. But as you can see, we had a bit of drizzle overnight as well. And well, the garage did its job. So it protected the robot and the charging station, which, which looks good. So today's job is to actually get this thing to map out the whole place and then test out some features.
one of the biggest things about this smart robot lawnmower is how quickly uh, it sets up and how quickly it deploys, how quickly you're able to get to using it. Yesterday it got dark pretty quickly and the robot told us that it couldn't really see, so it needed to use its AI camera to map out the lawn, but we couldn't do that last night. So we decided to wait till this morning. We woke up this morning, it was a bit of drizzle, some water, some moisture, um, so we decided to wait, it, wait that out before we did the automatic mapping. 30 to 40 minutes after, or 30 to 40 minutes later, it got the job done. During the mapping process, I did have to intervene a couple times just to help the robot move around because it got stuck a few times. But most of the time when it got stuck, all I did was just hit the play button on the app to continue auto mapping. So essentially it's a very hands-free process to get this thing fully set up, auto mapped and right to work because all that's left now is to cut the grass, that's it. Now the cool thing is we're going to be monitoring this thing all the way from inside the house. You know, there'll be some obstacle in the way to see how well it handles obstacle avoidance. It's also got a built-in camera that you can access just like a security camera um, directly through the app. Right now all that's left is to hit that play and head inside. Base station detecting. Starting task. About a third of the way through the first mowing session, I was able to form an initial impression of the Lombard's cutting ability. At that point, it was already living up to its promise of providing a hands-free experience as I didn't have to do anything but watch on the app while it did a fantastic job in maintaining the cut height and travel path that it was set at from the beginning. Now, we're still about a month shy of getting some proper green and luscious grass here in Calgary, but even with what we had, it was still pretty clear that the robot was doing a phenomenal job in maintaining neat parallel strokes. The VFSD system worked really well right out of the box, allowing the E18 to easily identify where the grass section of the lawn ended. It was able to get as close as possible to the edge of the fence while it was mowing, which honestly surprised me. Another feature that I tested was the LawnBot's edge cutting ability. With the edge spacing set to the max, the E18 was able to overhang at a transition point between a grass and a non-grass area, which helped it achieve a much better and cleaner cut along the edges. I'm sure this amazing feature will come in very handy if you find that you've got one of those lawns that borders a concrete pad or something similar. The next thing I tested out was the responsiveness of its obstacle avoidance system. The lawn bot quickly detected and responded to anything in its path, except of course grass. Again here, it was surprisingly very responsive. Whether it came across a large, small, or moving obstacle, the VFSD system on the E18 consistently identified it and smoothly drove around it while mowing. Something else it did really well was fight its way through whenever it came across difficult terrains. In my case, there was a section of the lawn which it struggled a bit to mow through due to having a very uneven surface. In fact, most of the lawn has been in need of a good leveling, so the fact that the E18 was able to mow through it effectively truly is a great feat. As for the battery, I was able to get through a full mowing session in about an hour and a half, and by then the battery had been depleted by just about 40 to 50%. This means it can probably still go for another round if needed without having to head back to the charging station. The cool thing is that when it's all done, it makes its way back to the charging base without any intervention from the user. So the whole process from mowing to charging and repeat is fully hands off. E18 is done uh, mowing the lawn and it did a it did a pretty good job. Now, I'm gonna talk about some of the things that I loved about it and just a couple of things that, you know, could be better. So, number one, the path optimization, like it did a great job. Every time I picked it up or moved it or had to reposition it, it'll find its way back to what it was already doing. Like it'll get back to it and continue and make sure it didn't miss a spot. Like it did a great job of actually cutting the grass. You can set different things like the height, the um, travel distance or speed and things like that. Blade speed, right out of the box, it was set to some um, to all the average numbers and I let it just do its thing. And it did a phenomenal job uh, at doing that. Like what I expect for something like this is maintenance, not to replace somebody that will, you know, replace the work entirely. It's just like a robot vacuum where um, it will do the job of ma making sure your floors are clean on a more consistent basis. You still have to, every once in a while, do a general cleaning. It does a great job of cutting and finding edges and whatnot, but it, it could get stuck or, you know, avoid uh, cutting some corners completely. So you might have to use an edge trimmer to still get those corners. But besides that, everything is great. This thing worked amazing. It found its way around. And when I even picked it up, um, the security feature kicked in. I got a notification on my phone that said, um, the robot had been picked up off the floor and needed to be placed back down. Maybe it would 
um, you know, go crazier if it was taken off the property, but I didn't even take it off the property. I just moved it around. I moved it away from um, where it was uh, working at. So it was pretty good to see that and how that worked. And obstacle avoidance was phenomenal as well. At one point I was dancing around in front of it and just kind of just being in the way and being a nuisance. And you, you guys see how well it handled that, or maybe you did, but essentially, it did, it, it, the obstacle avoidance is phenomenal. If you're looking to pick up something like this, you know, if you're looking to uh, save some time, save some money uh, with your landscaping this summer, uh, spring, summer season that's coming up, then I think it's time to invest uh, in a robot smart lawnmower. If you already have a smart robot vacuum, then trust me, you're going to love something like this. It did a phenomenal job of just, you know, getting the grass cut low. Just know that it won't pick up the clippings, so it's, it's, it doesn't do that. It just cuts it and you know leaves it there. So if you want something that picks up clippings, this is not it. But if you want something that just cuts the grass, keeps it looking clean and fresh, then the E18 or the E15 is something you gotta look into. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you guys have any questions about um, a smart robot lawnmower, if, you, if you've experienced one before, I had something that's similar in the past before. I would like to hear your experiences. I'm really loving um, the evolution of lawnmowers right now. It's going crazy and I think we're gonna see a lot more of these kinds of tech and you know how these things evolve. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed filming it, but I'll catch you guys in my next one. You already know who it is, man. It's your boy, Tommy, and I'm out, y'all.